Hey, hey, welcome or welcome back. It is as always good to see you today. It is Wednesday and I'm just trying to get a video recorded and uploaded that, you know, is related to whatever's going on in the Amberverse. And last night I watched the Casey interview from Mr. Snowflake. Now that is the only video from Mr. Snowflake that I've ever seen. I haven't watched any of his Shaped by the Algorithm or anything else. Uh, they do pop up in my recommended, but I have not seen any of them. Um, so I have not seen the video previous to this one that was kind of about Casey. Um, I think it's going to be a series title, something about victims of an empath or something like that. Um, but we do have an interview here with Casey from Mr. Snowflake. Flake. So apparently Casey had commented on that empath video and wanted to talk to Mr. Snowflake and agreed to an interview. This video didn't seem to me as much of an interview as just Casey talking. Mr. Snowflake did ask a couple of questions, but it was pretty much just Casey just talking. Uh, it, it, it could have just as easily have been a video that Casey uploaded on his own channel. Uh, Mr. Snowflake was really kind of not needed <laughs> in this video. Um, so I'm I'm only going to talk about a couple of things from this interview that stuck out to me. I'm not going to cover every little thing. If you want to see things that I don't talk about, lots of other creators are talking about this. And you can, of course, watch the video, the full interview on Mr. Snowflake's channel, which... I will link that down below if you don't know where to find it. Um, if you do see me looking down over to the side up here, one of these sides, I do have some notes written down that I that I that I was taking when well I say writing I was typing um, when I was watching the video because it's an hour and fifty minutes long. The first twenty or so minutes are just spent kind of you know Casey talking about how he's doing, what he's been up to. And things of that nature. But the first thing that I want to look at is um, Casey mentions the word in starting to talk about the beginning of their relationship. And I believe Mr. Snowflake has taken this usage of the word and has ran with it and has brought this up in a post on Instagram, has mentioned it in some other places, and I really think it's uncalled for. But I'm going to play this section of the interview where Casey is talking about the beginning of his relationship with Amberlynn, and how they met and how things kind of started. And then a lot of stuff about stuff about the, the, the I know I can't say this on um YouTube when it comes up, uh, I, I guess you might believe it, the, the, the pet stuff. Yeah. That really, like, I had, okay, so this is what story, not a small well, story, this is something that happened that I was debating back and forth of saying, I've said it to my friend and, you know, told her what happened and I was like, I don't know if I should say this, but I never said it in the original video because that's not what it was all about. I wasn't about all this. I was just about, hey, I didn't do that. When we first started dating, of course, online, and the site was Moco Space, hmm. that horrible site. <laughs> it's Moco Space. And um, I was just, like, with the story of how I met her, I'll, I'll start with that, is that I didn't meet her there because I was going on those chat rooms and stuff like that. And I was 15. I just literally came out. I did not, like, and in being 15, you see all your friends, you know, that you're close with, if they're in relationships or not, you're like, I don't want that. But in the early 2000s, that was very hard to do with someone who is gay, straight, bi, trans, what not have you. That was very hard and very not really accepting that much back then. Yeah. And so I went on Moco Space and I was like, okay, you know, as a 15 year old, I had no business being on there. Now that I'm older, I'm like, how did I not die? How did I get captured or died? And I used a fake name, the name that she said. And at the time, I put Amaro because um, that was the name that he gave me for him. I used that big name because I couldn't trust anyone online. And I was like, ah, I'm not, I'm not, I was at least at 15 year old, at 15 years old, smart enough to go, 
I'm going to use a fake name. And the name I chose, if anyone's curious about why it's that name, it is the English name to Sailor Uranus because I love Sailor Moon. Sailor Uranus I idolized as a kid, and her English name is Amara with her Japanese name being Haruka. So I used Amara because Sailor Moon. <laughs> that's where that came from. And I, that's what I use because I couldn't trust anyone online. You don't know who they are. You know, it was the early 2000s. You poo poo. But eventually I did tell her. She was upset. Here are the facts. You lied about your name right off the bat, but still called me insane. But it was just really for my protection. But um, when it was still long distance, I, even to this day, I am not very fond of spicy pictures being sent. Huh. I'll put it that way. I'm not very fond of it. I don't like doing that. I, I'm not. Well, when, when I was at my Nina's house and I was texting her and whatnot, she wanted a spicy picture. She was asking me about this for, for a couple, for a couple weeks. And I was like, I'm not, I'm not comfortable. I'm not comfortable. I'm not comfortable. And I was 15 again. I was 15, 17. And I just kept telling her, I'm not, I'm not comfortable with that. I'm not comfortable with that. You know, why do you want this? Like, I'm not comfortable. And she didn't want like, front she wanted you know the and uh <laughs> like she, that's what she wanted she wanted the blue the belt and i was like oh well um no i'm not comfortable i would and i just kept saying i'm not comfortable with it but then she said you know and i wish i had my old phone which was a little tiny like sliver in motorola but you know i she said you know if you don't do that i you know i'm gonna be mad i'm gonna break up with you Okay. And at 15, yeah. hearing that from someone who you're dating, you're just like, oh no, I don't want to lose the only person who's actually attracted to me. Yeah. And yeah. I, I did it. Yeah. And I didn't like doing it. I didn't want to, but hearing the, if you don't do that, this is going to happen. I was like, oh, well, I don't want to be single and not have anyone who cares about me like this. So I guess I will I'll do it. And I did it. And do I regret it? Yes, I regret it. And um, being at the age I am now, if I had a kid who did that, I would be like, oh no, 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 no. You don't need to be with that person. You don't need to be with anyone like that because that's, I mean, that is distributed, dis distributing just of, of a, yeah. And, uh, yeah. All right. So, as I mentioned before I started that clip, uh, Casey used the word to describe what Amberlyn was doing. Um, I wouldn't say that is accurate. They were both children, essentially. They were both still underage. Amberlyn may have uh, been 17, but in several states, that is still considered underage. They're both still very young. They're very young teenagers, I mean, 15, 17. Um, Amberlynn has always had age appropriate relationships. So I would not by, by any stretch of the imagination, consider her to be a, and, uh, I, I think that is an incorrect categorization of her. Um, she is many things, but she is not that. Um, so, Along the lines of those pictures, should Amber Lynn have requested these pictures? No. Should Casey have sent them? No. Amber Lynn used Casey's insecurities and fear of losing someone that he cared about and his desire to be wanted against him to get him to do what she wanted. Um, this is just another example of Amber Lynn's manipulation, which we've all seen in all of her relationships. So, however, I will say, though, what happened between Amber and Casey is not uncommon. Ever since teenagers have been able to send pictures via cell phones, they've been sending these types of pictures. I grew up in the 90s. I was a teenager in the 90s. We didn't have cell phones. It wasn't something that could have been done. Can I imagine people that I went to school with doing that? Absolutely. So we hear news stories all the time of girls sending their boyfriend a photo because he asked for it. And then next thing you know, they've broken up or something and the photo is all over the school. 
This is not uncommon. It happens a lot. It's something teenagers do. Now, as you saw on the screen, Mr. Snowflake did put a little blurb about it being against the law. It is. It is illegal because it is considered CP. Even if it is between two people that are considered children. Even if you are teenagers sharing this, it is considered CP and it is illegal. Can Amberlynn be prosecuted for this? As I think this is what Mr. Snowflake was alluding to in some Instagram posts. No, she cannot. There is a statute of limitation of five years. This was like 15 years ago, 16 years ago almost. So I, I believe the age gap between Casey and Amberlynn. Casey's birthday, I believe, is November 25th. And Amberlynn's birthday is December 27th. And I, so I want to say it's like a 23-month uh, gap, a year and 11 months. So when Casey turned 15, Amber was getting ready to turn 17 because Amberlynn's getting ready to turn 33 and Casey is 31 right now. So should this have happened? No. Amberlynn should not have requested those pictures. However, I will say at that age, you're not mature enough in a lot of respects to understand that what you could be doing is wrong. Do I think Amberlynn would do something like that now? No, I don't think she would. I think she has at least grown enough in that respect that requesting nudes from somebody and threatening to break up with them if they don't send them would be something she would do. I think this was something that a young Amberlynn that wanted to get her way requested because she wanted, she wanted to see some things and she was young. Um... She took advantage of somebody that was vulnerable and got Casey to do what she wanted by threatening to break up with her or him. Sorry, my bad. Um, so that being said, <laughs> some of the other things that are brought up are some, I'm going to say alleged physical abuse situations that Casey found himself in with Amberlynn. Um, you know, you said after a year at turn and, and started to get physical, grabbing your, grabbing your arm. Was it like, I don't know, a couple of months in between the, the violence? Oh, no. Oh, oh so it was all. Oh, no. It was, it was, oh, no. It was, it was, once that happened, I will say it was probably a couple of weeks between. And then it was just full blown. Like, I, like I said, I would go to school. I would have like green and purple bruises on my arms where her fingers were grabbing me and stuff like that. Um, it's hot here, so it's like I couldn't, I didn't hide them with the, you know, because I rode a bike to school at, at, at some times when I um, had a bike and tires didn't pop, but I was like, oh, it was a bike accident. It was a bike accident. And, but you could tell they were fingerprints. You could tell, yeah. you know, it was, you know, she would hit me, you know, like I said in that video, like clearly my mom and Dave were not there. And, you know, there was that, her dresser, the table, our bed, and she just started hitting me. I can't remember. Again, I don't remember the arguments, and I know it was probably something over, over something dumb. Mm. But she just started pop, 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 just like, and I'm just like, oh, what the? And then one time we got in an argument, and she stormed out, and I was like, I knew I had to go after her, and she was running away from me like a little game around the apartment complex. And my friend Nick came out, and he's like, she's, and then he caught, and he like, you know, stopped her, and, and he's like, what are you doing? And she was just like laughing and like, huh, I'm gonna run away from you, so you can't catch me. It's like, yeah, like she would see me and go the other way and go the other way until he was like, why are you doing that? And then he like made her stay, and I was like, why are you running from me? And she never answered me. And she just like had this goofy smile on her face and just like, yeah, I'm just playing. So here we have examples of Amberlynn getting physically violent with Casey. And Casey does say later that Amberlynn did tell him that she did hit Crystal once, but Casey thinks it was probably more than once. I think with Destiny, the one that we heard about was her throwing the Mountain Dew bottle at the car. I don't think she was ever physically abusive with Becky that we know of, I don't think. The, uh, the, the abuse with Becky was more emotional and financial and mental. It is never okay to physically attack your partner or anyone. Uh, it's just, it's just not okay. <laughs> There's no excuse for that. Absolutely none. 
Uh, Amberlynn does lash out. She does quickly. She's she's quick to anger. A lot of these things that we're hearing from Casey and that we've seen in these other relationships are symptoms and traits of borderline personality disorder, which Amberlynn was just diagnosed with, we've heard. Um, and this quick to anger and these very volatile relationships, these are traits of BPD. So we're seeing these things even in Amberlynn's teenage years. And a lot of these things also stem from Amberlynn's fear of being abandoned, which is also a symptom of BPD and also probably stems from her childhood trauma and being pretty much abandoned by her parents and put into foster care. So Amberlynn, well, well, we'll get to more of the emotional stuff here in a minute, but physically, not okay. Absolutely not okay. I would think that Amberlynn has realized this is not okay and no longer does these things. But we, I, I don't recall hearing anything after Destiny of her doing anything physical to a partner. What she did, did to Casey, though, absolutely not okay. And I feel bad for Casey. So Casey does give us some examples of Amberlynn's emotional abuse and manipulations. Uh, they're kind of sprinkled throughout the interview, but I'll put a couple of them here. Oh God, I was having an anxiety attack before school. And this was before like, I could really like get control of it over it. Like I was still like figuring out medications for it. Huh. And uh, I called her and I was like, and I was crying. I was like, you know, baby, I, I can't, you know, I'm, I'm having anxiety. I don't know what to do. And she screamed at me over the phone. I don't even know what she said because the scream was so loud. She just screamed at me over the phone. And you could tell she was in the bathroom and because it echoed. And it just like, you just hear her. Like, and I was like, well, I, I'm sorry that you're mad. And then she screams, I don't care. Hangs up. Okay. And so I was like, okay, well, okay, I got to deal with this alone. I got to deal with my anxiety alone. Okay. And then she texted me saying, you made me get upset at school. You know, I'm yelling in the bathroom. People are looking at me. She did not like me going out with my friends. I lost a few friends because of her, but she hated Alex. She absolutely hated my best friend, Alex. Hated her so much. For, I don't know what reason. Maybe it's because Alex seen through her. Maybe it's because Alex didn't put up with her BS, mm -hmm. but she absolutely despised her. And <laughs> I confronted her. Um, I wish I had those messages. I deleted everything from her after that whole scandal fiasco um, because she tried to add Alex on Facebook uh, before the whole video came out. <laughs> and I and Alex messaged me saying, why is Amber trying to add me? I hate her. She does. She hates her. She hates her. I, I, I you know, she hates her. She, and I said, I said, I don't even know because yes, yeah, she does hate you. And like that story is every time I hung out with Alex, I would tell her, I want to hang out with Alex. Alex is my best friend ever. You know, we're as close as cousins. Like I, we are, she's still to this day, you know, my friend and you know, my best friend. And when it came to hanging out with Alex, I'd be like, I want to hang out with Alex. Please don't cause a scene, nothing. I'm just going to get lunch. I'm just going to do this. I'm just going to do that. I was still a teenager. I wanted to hang out with my friends, but it felt like I was in a very a, a marriage, like a marriage that couldn't, I couldn't do anything. And she, and she would tell me this all the time. Yeah, you can go hang out with her. Yeah, you can go hang out with her. Yeah, you can, you can, you can, you can. Okay, you can be good with it this time, right? Yeah, of course I will. Are you sure? Because last time, no, I won't do that. I promise, I promise, I promise. I promise every single time. Every time she would get mad at me, tell me I have to come home, or I'm going to break up with you, or I'm going to leave, I'm going to get on the bus right now, you won't see me again. And Alex was getting frustrated with it. And I, I can't blame her because I would sit there distraught. You know, I'm 16, I'm distraught because I'm getting threats of my, you know, girlfriend saying, you know, you're hanging out with her if you don't come back home right now when i want you to in the next 5 10 15 20 30 minutes you're going to you know i'm going to leave you and you'll never see me again and I, i'm gonna break up with you because you know you're not coming home i'm like wow i retorted in some way probably you know saying what she said before to me or saying something a comment of 
whatever she just said to me because I think she needed help. And I'm like, well, I, no, I think she said, you know, I need help. I'm like, well, I'm in high school. I can't help you because I was mad. And she gets her pencil and just rams a line through my paint, my drawing for drawing, a dark, just, and I sat, sat there and I looked at it. Like, you know, I role played online and she saw, you know, stories back and forth. And she saw that the story was, I didn't know she was staring at me, like over my shoulder, looking at me type. And she saw that the story was getting a little spicy and she grabbed my phone out of my hand and chucked it against the wall and it, psh. What, what, did she apologize? What did, what did she do after that? You know, I, you know, I don't like that stuff. So we see examples here of Amberlynn trying to control Casey, especially trying to isolate him from his friends by, you know, messaging his friends, trying to get them to stop talking to him, threatening to break up with him if he continues to hang out with his friends. These are all things that emotionally abusive people do in relationships. A lot of people with narcissistic personality disorder will also do these things in order to isolate the person they're with. Um, Amberlynn wants her partners to be completely reliant on her for their emotional needs and even financial needs later. So she isolates them because she's afraid of somebody leaving her. If they are completely dependent on her, then they won't leave her. These are all symptoms, uh, again, of borderline personality disorder and also a little bit of narcissism, which she hasn't been diagnosed with that, but she does have some traits of it. I was in a relationship very similar to this. I had a girlfriend that did not want me to have any other friends, not even co-worker friends. Um, she did not like if I took a co-worker out to lunch with me. She got into my car one day and she's like, why is the seat in a different position? I'm like, a bunch of us went out to lunch and, you know, so-and-so rode with me. Well, don't let it happen again. Excuse me? <laughs> I don't think so. Um, she said once that I had, I was looking for a gaming group on meetup.com because I wanted to find a Pathfinder group to play with. And she's like, you don't need any other friends. All you need is me. So I I know what it's like to be in a relationship like that, to be with someone that wants wants to isolate you and wants to mentally abuse you and emotionally abuse you so that you don't leave them. I know what that's like. So I can see the tactics that Amberlynn is using, and most people can see these tactics in order to get people to stay with her and not leave her. So, not good. And we see these things continue throughout all of Amberlynn's relationships. And I think Casey um, puts it pretty well here. She has definitely honed her skills over the years. Yeah, yeah. Awful. And... Um... Sorry, go on. No, 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 go ahead. No, no, go, go on, you, you first. Oh, <laughs> I was just saying that when she was with me, he, she was very outwardly mean. Yeah. She didn't hide it. She didn't try to mask it. But hearing a lot of stuff now, I'm just like, she has had time to hone her skills and her, and it is not like, it's scary. It's terrifying. Mm -hmm. It is terrifying. And Casey had this advice to give to any possible future partners of Amberlynn. Don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, I think that's good advice <laughs> from Casey to anybody looking to date Amberlynn. Don't do it. Um, that is all I'm going to cover in this video. There were some other things said. There are some other things that I could talk about, but I'm going to leave it at that. I think overall, it didn't really seem to me to be an interview. Um, Mr. Snowflake didn't talk a whole lot. It was pretty much Casey just talking. Uh, Mr. Snowflake asked a couple of questions. Um, I think a lot of the questions that he wanted to ask came from subscribers or other people. It wasn't like he had things that he wanted to ask and like a narrative or story to tell. But I think Casey did just fine on his own, just talking. But the, but like I mentioned early on, this could have just as easily been Casey sitting down and uploading a video to his channel. 
So I think a question that a lot of us have is why now? Why did Casey want to speak out now? The relationship was, you know, 15 years ago. And the whole little scandal with Amber accusing Casey of grape was like 10 years ago. And I think, I think everybody believes Casey in that situation. We know Amber Lynn was full of crap. But it's like, why now? And I think this hopefully provided some closure to Casey to kind of get some things off his chest. I really think Casey could benefit from going to therapy, talking to to a psychiatrist, psychologist, or somebody to work through a lot of these feelings and emotions, even not even just from Amber Lynn, but from other relationships, because he he mentions that he has been cheated on a lot. I think Casey could really do well with speaking with somebody about some of these feelings and emotions and working through some of these things. Um, I think he has been able to do well for himself. He didn't go to college, got a degree. Um, uh, I think it was an associate's degree in business. Um, he's, he's doing well, he's happy and moving on with his life, even though he is still recognized as being one of Amber Lynn's exes. But something that we learn from this video, and as we look at Amber Lynn's past relationships, now granted, I joined the Amberverse I started watching during the Becky era. So I'm not as familiar with things that happened with Crystal or Destiny. But we see these patterns of Amber Lynn's behavior towards her partners and towards people. And they started with Casey. And as Casey mentioned, Amber Lynn did get better at honing her skills and trying to hide more of the overt signs of doing these things. So... Amberlynn's not going to change in this respect. But speaking of Amberlynn directly herself, we did get a response from Amberlynn. So there is obviously um, an elephant in the room. <laughs> not a pun. The interview that my ex did. So I did watch it. Um, it was hard to watch for several different reasons. Everyone deserves the opportunity to voice their side of the story. Um, no one deserves to feel silenced. I feel like having the opportunity to share your side of the story and your perspective of a situation that happened is sometimes honestly really good for the soul. <laughs> um, I know from firsthand that sometimes talking about things feels like a really big weight is lifted off of your shoulders and your heart and sometimes it's healing for some people. So that relationship happened when we were both teenagers. We were very, very, very young. And I think watching that interview made me realize more than ever how much I have grown up. I'm at fault for so many things I've done when I was younger. I've done just a few years ago. I have made mistakes. I have learned along the way. But using like young, I was younger as an excuse. It doesn't justify, it doesn't make things okay. Like no matter what side of the story, that the audience wants to believe regardless of anything else it doesn't make anything that happened and that relationship okay i know a lot of people are asking me about it and i'm simply not going to talk about it like one thing you're not going to catch me doing is sitting here saying well he lied about this he lied about this this is actually what happened it's not going to happen here i care more about moving on letting go. I'm not going to say this has been easy for me by no means. I have shed some tears, but there's power in knowing that him and I are adults now and we get to choose which route we take. And this is the one that I'm choosing to take and I'm actually really happy with that. And I just wish him nothing but happiness and wellness. That's, that's what matters to me. A lot happened in that relationship for two teenagers who were literally in an adult relationship. And that is what he said in the interview and it hit me like a train. I was like, that is so true. We were both put in an adult relationship way too young. There was a lot of toxicity from both ends and I just hope that he's okay. I, I want to be okay as well and I kind of just want to move on from the situation. It was 15 years ago, like 15 years ago as teenagers. It's wild. But above anything else in the whole entire world, I just want healing to happen 
for both of us. I feel like that's really important. But um, that is all I'm going to say about the situation. And I'm going to stand my ground on that because I just feel like continuously talking about a relationship that happened between two teenagers 15 years ago isn't good for anybody, especially the two people involved. Hey. So the response from Amber Lynn is basically that she's not going to respond, which um, in my opinion is just kind of validates what Casey is saying because Amber can't refute any of it. Even though she's playing it off as, you know, I'm not going to make videos saying, oh, he's lying about this. He's lying about this. This is what really happened. I think it's because she can't. Because everything that Casey has said is true. The closest Amber Lynn comes to accepting any responsibility is saying that she made mistakes because she was young. And then saying there was toxicity on both sides. I think the toxicity came from one side and that was Amber Lynn's side. Where I do agree with Amber Lynn is that this relationship was 15 years ago. They were both teenagers. They were both young. And this relationship that was more serious than it should have been needed to be. And there were mistakes made in the relationship. I'm sure Casey wasn't perfect, but we don't really see or hear anything of that nature from Amberlynn um, or from Casey. I think Casey was very beat down by this relationship and was just very compliant. So I think Amber Lynn was the one that was trying to control the relationship and was the one in control. And that's where most of the negativity came from. I also think a lot of that was because she was young and, and, and Casey was young. I think Amber Lynn has changed in some aspects, but not all of them as far as her need to be in control and things of that nature but I don't think she would do things like ask for spicy pictures and things like that but Amberlynn is still controlling and emotionally abusive and mentally abusive and financially abusive physical I don't know about I can't speak to that because I haven't seen any evidence with Becky at least um but yeah I think Amberlynn's non-response is because honestly she can't refute anything so she's making it seem like she's being the bigger person and just not engaging but I think that's a very calculated response because she can't respond to anything uh, without admitting that she's done wrong and Amber Lynn cannot admit wrongdoing on her own part she can't admit to being the bad person in the relationship so that's why we're not getting a full response but I think that's all I have to say on this. I think um, I did have my notes and I think I covered most of the things that I wanted to cover. But I, I do hope that Casey did find some peace in this, uh, this, this interview and will do better. Um, as far as Mr. Snowflake, uh, I don't think it was a good interview from his side, to be honest. And I don't like seeing clickbaiting type things and little things about, oh, Amber is a, and she should be in jail for things she's done to children because that is absolutely not the case. That was never said, that was never mentioned. And if it has things to do with when she was with, with Destiny, I also don't think that is the case. And I think that is very disingenuous and it's just trying to stir up shit, um, but that's my opinions on Mr. Snowflake and some of his actions. But all that being said, I hope you all have a lovely day. And until next time, be safe and take care.